Okay, so if we start looking at graphing, we're going to look at different types of graphs, which if you read the newspaper, your ACT we talked about, so much information is presented as a table or some type of graph. So a graph is any visual display of data that simply makes things easier. It categorizes things, puts it together. A circle graph, pie chart, pie graph, I don't care which one of those you call it, will have wedges and is very good at showing percentages. So here I'm looking at the stratosphere, so kind of back to when we were talking about the ozone layer. I can look at different things that contribute chlorine in the stratosphere. I can read it in a table and see the numbers and that's okay. But if I actually look at it in a circle graph, I can see, oh wow, you know, this really does take up a bigger chunk. This is a large portion. So pie charts are very good at showing percentages. So that's pretty much the purpose of a pie graph. Bar graphs are going to show quantities and cate categories. Um, it's not going to deal with time most often. So if I, okay, here it's showing dietary sources of magnesium, shows different things, and then it shows a content. This could be class sizes. I could have grade one, grade two, grade three, and my number of students. I could survey the school on favorite foods and pizza, cheeseburger, ice cream, and I could have, you know, numbers. So a bar graph usually shows a quantity on the y-axis or the vertical axis and then some type of grouping along the x-axis. And you can have graphs that have like two bars. You know, maybe it's like before and after, or boys and girls, or it can have two bars for each category as well. The one that we probably use the most is a line graph. On a line graph, the independent variable is always going to go on the bottom, on the x-axis, and the dependent variable will always go on the y-axis. The nice thing about using a line graph is I can calculate things. So if you can see here density, since we will be talking about density and doing a density lab, if I can find my mass, so obviously here at A, 27 grams is my mass. I would put that on top. At A, which this is not a very good graph because it doesn't actually have the digits for you to read, but it tells me that the volume is 10. So I can actually calculate the density using the slope of that graph. Or over here, I could calculate how much the temperature changes as the elevation changes. I can use it to calculate things. I can also see that I have a positive relationship, a direct proportion. If my mass increases, my volume increases. Here I have a negative slope. So as my elevation increases, my temperature decreases. So by looking at the graphs, I can very quickly make a judgment about what's happening. And that slope, I'm hoping that you've had enough math, uh, math to know how to find slope, which is simply rise over run. So you take the difference in your y over the difference in your x. And density is a great example of that. And we will probably, if we have time when we do our density lab, We'll try and use this. If not, I'll just give you an example at some point in time where you can calculate that. So there's two kinds of things that you can do with a graph. Interpolation is reading and estimating values that fall between points. This is easiest, so I can use my graph. The graph shows ozone measurements. I could actually, you know, measure from here 
to hear and do a, you know, I could do some math and calculate my slope there wherever there's a, a short measurement. Extrapolation is when you estimate values outside points. And this is something that you'll see. So I might have a graph like this. Three, one, two, three. And maybe my graph goes like, I don't know, goes like this. And this is minutes, and this is, I don't know, distance. So to extrapolate, I might ask you to estimate what is the distance at four minutes. So four minutes is not actually on your graph, but you're going to use the information from your get graph to make a guess as to where that line might be. So inter means inside. I can use the information that I have. At two minutes, my distance is one. Extra means it's not on the graph. You have to estimate or look a little bit outside of the graph. Uh, this one, I am not, I'm not going to play this animation. If you want to, it's on your computer. It talks about forensic science. It's about 10 minutes long, and it just shows some different things that science is used um, basically in forensic science. But I'm not going to play that. You can look at that if you want. So very quick review. This one should be short. Why are graphs created? It's convenient. It's easy. They're good to look at. How can they be interpreted? We can look at what's on there. We can guess what happens afterwards. We can read. Uh, we can calculate using a line graph. We can make estimations and things like that. So basically that is section four.